One useful side effect of using patcher storage for managing your patcher persistence is that you can do preset morphing that way. We will take a quick look at how to do that. I'll copy and paste parts of the Chebby wave shaping example to demonstrate the use of patcher with a multi-parameter GUI object. So first let's hide away the wavetable generation in a sub patcher so we have enough space. We then assign a scripting name, partials, to the multi-slider to easily access it later. Let's continue with the petrol storage and send it the client window message. We also load in autopatter, which auto names GUI objects according to their scripting name. We open the patter storage's client window and see that we have a live.gain object referenced here, as well as the partials multislider. In the rightmost column, we can see the current data of those objects, one volume in db for the gain object and eight float values representing the partials amplitudes for the multislider. We also see that we could switch between different interpolation modes, but leave it at linear for the moment. Let's store some presets. For that we need to send the store message to the pattern storage, followed by a preset index. We need to connect that number box to the second outlet of AutoPatter to exclude it from being stored in the pattern storage, because that would introduce a loop into our logic. We set some partial amplitudes and actually store the first two presets. If we send storage window to the pattern storage, we can inspect the values we just stored. We add a third preset and a recall message to actually retrieve them. So there are our different wave shaping presets fed with the vibes example. Now, to morph between them, we just need to send a float instead of an integer into the recall message. Okay, it's probably not the best idea to do this live, because every move of the mouse triggers a new buffer recalculation, but it can be a very useful tool to discover new timbres hiding in between your presets.